Our next speaker, Charlie Thompson, are you in the house? I haven't seen Charlie. So um, you can tell Charlie what I said about him. <laughs> <clears throat> I really didn't know Charlie Thompson until he ran for the Iowa legislature here last session. I found out that his father had been a legislator, and now he's a legislator. And he's a, he's a lawyer. He's a really nice guy. He's a great guy. And I understand that if you're in the Capitol building late at night, you can go into the legislative chamber and there's Charlie. And he's reading. And he's studying. He's very dedicated. Uh, between Charlie and Cindy Golding, just yesterday, uh, they, they killed House File 411. <laughs> you know. For those of you who don't know what House File 41 was, it was, it was a proposition to take away ordinance authority and other authorities away from cities and counties so that they couldn't pass setback ordinances or anything else to regulate uh, utilities in their jurisdiction. They were going to take that away. And it's just great what Charlie and Cindy Golding did to do that. So. Um, also, uh, this is from me, a personal note. In, in the Iowa State uh, Supreme Court in 1996, they made a ruling on what is a nuisance. And trespass, when you look in the code, trespassing is a nuisance. And it says to enjoin and abate and get rewards for damages caused by that nuisance. So you have rights and repercussions for them trespassing on your lawn because the Supreme Court says that's a nuisance. I won't get too far into the weeds on that one, sorry. But I was at the Iowa Event Center, I think it was two, three years ago, and there's this young lady up on stage getting awarded the most awesome legislator in the state award, Sandy Salmon. She went from the legislature, <laughs> Remember that? <laughs> most conservative. <laughs> most conservative transfers in my language the most awesome. So anyway, then she had to move so that she could be in her new senatorial jurisdiction and she ran for Senate. And now we call her Senator Sandy Salmon. And it's my pleasure to introduce Sandy. <clears throat> Well, thank you, Doug. I appreciate that introduction. I don't know where it was you saw me. <laughs> What's that? Iowa Event Center. Iowa Event Center. Okay. <laughs> I guess I don't remember it, but <laughs> gosh. Well, it, it's great to see everybody out here to fight for a constitutional right, private property rights. Um, it's just very gratifying to see that you all are awake, um, aware, uh, interested, and that you care about your rights under our Constitution, and that's why you're here. And you're here also because there is an imminent threat on those rights. And that's why you're showing up. And if it takes that to wake all of Iowa up, so be it. Um, but um, I believe that it's a good fight. I believe that we're on God's side in this fight. And as was alluded to earlier, if we stick together and... Uh, make make the moves that these folks here, Representative Congressman King and uh, Doyle Turner and the uh, our other um, people involved full time in the fight are telling us to make. Um, I think we can win the fight. So um, be encouraged, stick together, and keep the faith. Um, I was elected to the Iowa Senate in 2022, 
and I represent Bremer County, where you're at here, and Butler County, and Chickasaw County, and Floyd County. Um, I've been in the legislature 12 years. I was a state representative before that, and then in 2022, I came into the Iowa Senate. I, ever since I've come in, I've always worked to defend constitutional rights, and that includes private property rights that are under threat now. In no way do I believe that Summit's request for the exercise of eminent domain is constitutional. Uh, the Fifth Amendment says, no person shall be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, nor shall private property be taken for public use without just compensation. And this same thing is echoed in our Iowa Constitution, Article 1, Section 18. Private property shall not be taken for public use without just compensation first being made. Notice it says for public use. This project is not public use any more than I'm wearing green but it is private use and therefore a violation of federal and state constitution as well as Iowa law to take it by eminent domain. Furthermore, Iowa Code 479B.9 charges the Iowa Utilities Board saying a permit shall not be granted to a pipeline company unless the board determines that the proposed services will promote the public convenience and necessity. In no way does this project meet the require, that requirement. It's not convenient and it's not necessary. <laughs> so Thomas Jefferson wrote in the Declaration of Independence that, that all men are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. He called these rights inalienable, and that means that no one has the right to take them away. And that's because they don't come from a person or a government. They come from God, so they can't be taken away. God's law is the highest law that all governments are subject to, and none must violate. Now, I, I've laid out for you the case for private property rights as expressed in our founding documents and our law. And so tonight, I don't want to repeat everything that all these good people have said. Uh, and so I'm just going to take a little bit deeper dive into the source of these rights. We need to know what foundation on which we stand. So I, I'm going to take a little different direction in my remarks tonight than what I have normally said at these rallies. Because I don't want to repeat myself, but I want to add to and enhance our conversation. Um, so I'm going to give you a number of quotes from the Bible so that you can understand the Christian foundation for private property rights. And it's not rocket science. If you have a note or a pen and want to write down the scripture verse, you can. Um, the first one, Exodus 20, 15. You shall not steal. Okay. <laughs> this is one of the Ten Commandments, as you know. And the presumption that God is making here is a right to ownership 
of the property that you possess rightfully. If you possess property rightfully, you have a right to ownership. That's the underlying presumption of that commandment, you shall not steal. Okay, Leviticus 19, 11, and 13. You shall not rob your neighbor. Again, a presumption by God that another person has a right to ownership that, okay, a presumption by God that a person has a right to ownership of the property he rightfully possesses. Then Micah 4.4, 4. this is a picture in this verse of life on earth as God intends after he renders judgment between people and nations. And this is what it says. And each of them will sit under his vine and under his fig tree with no one to make them afraid. For the mouth of the Lord of hosts has spoken. Here we can see that God intends for us to possess and enjoy what is rightfully ours. In Jeremiah 5.28, this, in this scripture, God is accusing his nation's leaders for not protecting people's rights. It says, they excel in deeds of wickedness and they do not defend the rights of the poor. Now, I don't consider any of us poor here, but compared to Summit, <laughs> you know, we don't have as much as they do. In Isaiah 3, 13 through 15, God continues saying to the, to the nation's leaders, it is you who have devoured the vineyard. The plunder of the poor is in your houses. What do you mean by crushing my people and grinding the face of the poor? declares the Lord of hosts. Isaiah 5, 22 and 23, and this is a solemn warning from God. Woe to those who take away the rights of the ones who are in the right. And the last one I'll leave you with, Isaiah 10, 1 and 2. Another warning. Woe to those who enact evil statutes and to those who constantly record unjust decisions so as to deprive the needy of justice and rob the poor of my people of their rights. God is condemning leaders that fail to address situations where people are in danger of losing their rights. Now, does that have application for today? God's word is timeless, and I believe it does have, have application for today. And I want you to know that we rest on a very strong as well as a very old and ancient foundation when we stand on private property rights. This is our heritage as Christians and our heritage as Americans. And may we continue to hold on to it and never let it go. God bless you all.